to um, to the session. I was just hitting the record button, so I didn't I didn't I didn't forget. Um, today's training should last about two hours. Uh, it's reports training. Uh, we're going to use the um, chat box for any questions that you have. Uh, Will um, and Luke will pause uh, during the training to um, check in on questions. So feel free to type them in as you think of them. Uh, you might find it helpful to view the screen in full screen layout um, if it's not already set that way. So all you need to do is click on the layout um, button. You'll see a drop down which tells you that you can go into full screen mode. Um, and I think that's I think that's about it. Um, you also everybody knows Margaret, who's a project manager for S South Orange, and I'm going to tell Hi, everybody. And I'm going to turn it over to um, William and Luke to introduce introduce themselves and get us started. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Luke. Uh, I'm the systems administrator here at Buckles. Hi, I'm William Lugine. I'm the other system administrator at the Buckles office. Well, you're a little bit low, just so you know, um, last time we had this issue and you did something to fix it. So whatever you could do to, to fix it would be great. Gotcha. That's better. All right, nice. All right, so uh, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. All right, so uh, for reports training, um, the thing to remember is, um, all our reports can be found in Buckles Connect. Um, you can also book, bookmark the individual uh, links, but um, they're already in uh, Buckles Connect, so that's the best place to find it. You're going to sign in with your Google account. Uh, and once you log into Buckles Connect, um, there's going to be a launcher here on the uh, top right. And when you click that, down at the bottom, you have uh, three categories of reports. So we have um, reports, uh, simply reports, and statistics. Um, reports is a combination of reports made by um, Innovative, our software partner, and then Buckles Custom Reports, and both of these are used, uh, created using SQL. And then simply reports is a um, product that comes as part of our software package that um, uh, is a different way to look at reporting, and we'll go over that in more detail. And then the statistics page is uh, monthly and annual reports that uh, we update for the consortium. One thing to remember, and you can see it says VPN here in parentheses, um, VPN just means uh, you need to be on a Buckles computer connected to the Buckles network to access um, both Simply Reports and uh, Polaris Reports and Buckles Custom Reports. If you're not on the Buckles network, just uh, use the VPN to connect to the network and then you can uh, access uh, these reporting tools. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. All right, so um, now we're gonna go into uh, SQL Reports and I'll turn it over to Will. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen really quickly. And we should be in here now. So, uh, like Luke mentioned before, you can access all of these uh, reports within Buckles Connect. So, I'm just going to go ahead and sign into that really quickly. And it looks like I'm already logged in, so it's going to log me in automatically. Um, now that I'm here, I can go ahead and go to the launcher, and then we're going to select um, reports VPN for this section. Um, another thing to note, too, if you want to go directly to the page here, you can just type in bucklesreports.buckles.org slash reports, and then that'll bring you to the screen here, uh, where you'll notice here we have um, a credential login screen. So we just want to put in our credentials in order to log in and make sure that we're ready um, to kind of get access to these reporting tools. I'm going to use um, Sora Circ as an example for today. So we're just going to type those credentials in.
All right, and from there, we should be loaded onto this page. So, um, just to give you kind of a quick background about what these reports are, um, SQL reports are usually split into two categories when we go into this. So, as Luke mentioned before as well, we have one um, section of reports called Buckles Custom Reports, and then we have one section called uh, Polaris Reports. First off, we're going to discuss bu Buckles Reports, and we're going to go into why these reports are kind of important. If you want to get access to the Buckles Custom Reports, you'll notice here that there's a few folders that we have at the top. I'm just going to go ahead and select Buckles Custom Reports so we can get into our reports. And then you'll notice here that there's a bunch of different reports that we have set up here. So um, essentially what the Buckles Custom Reports do are, um, these are reports that have been uh, created throughout the history of Buckles through based from the Buckles staff. And um, a lot of these reports are utilized in order to make sure that you're following things like uh, policies within the PMP manual and just increasing efficiency when it comes to the workflow of libraries within the consortium. So um, these are going to be really helpful to utilize um, in order to make sure that you're following a lot of the policies that we have set here. Um, one thing to note is that you have all the reports listed here. If you go ahead and click the three buttons or the three dot button here, you'll notice that a little pop up shows up a different menu here and you can see at the top. This gives you a, a quick summary of what this report will do. So that's going to be really helpful if you're looking at any of these reports and have any questions on what they do. Just go ahead and click these 3 dot buttons and then it'll show you uh, what this report particularly is for. Um, in terms of our example, we're going to go to uh, lost items recently lost. So this is going to be right here. And then again, if I click the three dots, um, you should see a quick description of it. This one doesn't, but I'm going to give you uh, more information on how this would work. So we're just going to go ahead and click into this and you'll notice here that we're brought to a new screen. So the lost items recently lost report is utilized to follow a specific policy. Um, you'll notice that it's going to be for the policy that refers to recently lost items. So any lost items that remain on a patron's record 12 months after their due date must be removed from the patron's card. And this report will help you with uh, kind of figuring out the items that you need to do that with. So um, we're just going to sh um, show you a few of the fields here and give you an example on how this report will be generated when you're in here. First up, you have select bills for, and then this is the field here. If you click this drop down button, it brings up a drop down menu of all the different libraries within the consortium. Um, for this example, we're going to just select Allendale, but you also have the option to select all, which will select every single library based on the type of report you're using. So we're just going to select Allendale in this example. Uh, for here, we have our another drop down menu that gives us two choices for items and patrons. We're going to leave it as items because um, we're going to be looking for particularly lost items in this case. Um, and another thing and really important thing to note, uh, for some reason, this isn't defaulting to December, but it's going to default to the month that you're in. However, when it comes to the policy, like we were saying before, you're looking for um, on a patron's record 12 months after the due date must be removed from the patron's card. So you want to make sure that um, based on what this report does and what it shows, it's going to show um, items from when they became lost and items be that become lost two months after their due date. So the report should be run for items that become lost 10 months prior to the current date so that you can get um, essentially all of the, the items that were lost 10 months ago. So in this example, since we're in December, I'm going to go to the drop down menu and I'm going to select February as our example here, since we're going to be doing 10 months prior to the current date. Um, if you want to go any farther than that, let's say 11 months, you would just go to January. And then from here, you can also change the year as well in order to go even further back. For now, we're going to leave this as February, and then we're going to leave this at 2023. Um, with that being said, now we can go ahead and click this view report button in order to generate our report. So now that the fields are set up, I'm going to go ahead and click it. And you'll see that all of this information is now uh, displaying since we've just generated it. Um, from here, you can see a lot of different information. For example, you can see the items branch, the patron library. Um, in terms of where the patron is from, and then you have information like the patron's name, their barcode, the item barcode, the call number, the title of the item, the loss date, and then how much it was, uh, how much money is, or how much the fine is that was charged onto their account based on that lost item. So you have a lot of information here, and then you can also even look at 
Um, in this case, this is a patron from West Orange, but lost, they lost an item from Allendale. So it kind of gets a little bit descript more descriptive when it comes to things like that as well. Um, just to give you another example, I'm going to do actually January in this case. And then if I generate it, you'll notice that new information shows up here. We have a different patron that had an item lost um, back in January. So this is going to be a really helpful tool in order to be able to kind of figure out which items are lost. Um, from that point, I just wanted to go, let me go back to February really quickly. And uh, you'll notice here at the top, and every time I generate a report, this top kind of row shows up here. The main things that you're going to want to look at when it comes to those this top row are two specific buttons. You notice here we have the floppy disk icon, which is usually known um, for saving. However, if you click it, it's a drop down menu and you'll get a bunch of different file types in which you can download your report. Um, a really helpful way that you can use this is if you click the Excel download um, file type option, you'll be able to download this as an Excel sheet. And then from there, um, you should be able to uh, kind of go into the Excel sheet and then edit all the data that you would need. So that's a really helpful tool if you wanna really go into the data that you have here and sort it however you would like, uh, just change it however you would like, and go from there with it. Um, so that's a really cool option when it comes to downloading the reports that you generated. You can also press the print button as well, which will again print out um, the report here so that you have a physical copy of whatever data has been generated from this report. You can use that option as well. So um, it's just really important in general though. Um, and I just wanna remind this when it comes to this report specifically and any other reports that you notice, um, you, you want to make sure that you're referring to the policy. So in this case, you're referring to the lost items policy so that you can have the particular procedures and how you would use this report in order to effectively uh, follow policy. So that's going to be really helpful to keep in mind. Um, if you do use this report or generate it, just always have the policy near you so you can use the procedures that are listed there. All right. Um, with that being said, I'm going to click the Buckles Custom Reports button here, and it's going to bring me back to our list of reports um, where we can be able to look for a few other things. Um, a few re recommended ones that I wanted to just give a uh, kind of a showing of are, again, we have the Lost Items Recently Lost Report, and this satisfies the unpaid lost items policy for lost items. Um, second, you have the Lost and Paid which is going to satisfy accepting payment policy for lost items as well. Um, so this can be really a helpful tool. Um, next up, you have lost items four month bills, which satisfies the collecting on four month bills policy. And that's gonna be right here next to the other report. And then lastly, you have um, two more, I'm sorry. You have the in transit and transferred reports. Um, this is going to be helpful for satisfying the lost in transit policy for delivery. So you can utilize this as well. This gives you a descriptive summary on what this would be used for. And then lastly, you have uh, holds needing attention, which helps you with filling your patrons holds that are not supplied or have been waiting a long time for more than four months. Um, and it gives you that quick description there as well. So that's going to be really helpful for you to, to utilize in this case. All right, so now that we're done with the Buckles custom reports, I'm going to go ahead and click home and I'm going to pass it off to Luke where he's going to go into the Polaris reports now. Luke, are you talking? Because we're not hearing you. All right. Sorry about that. I just had to uh, unmute myself. So um, we're now back at Buckles Connect, and um, we're going to go back into um, reports. Okay, so now we're going to go um, and look at the Polaris reporting side of things. So the one thing to remember about Polaris reports um, that most reports are going to be in the circulation folder right here. And unless otherwise noted, um, 
it's attributed to circulation at the library uh, the checkout occurred at, um, and not necessarily the library that owns the item or that the patron belongs to. So it's uh, circ is attributed to the library the item um, circulated at, and the patron is you know um, uh, taking the item out from. So. Um, most things will be in here in the circulation folder. Um, what report we'll kind of go through is uh, patron circulation statistics right here. Luke, I just want to point out that um, the Buckles custom reports that Will just showed, um, that is a contrast to the ones we're looking at now because the circulation typically for those is attributed to the owning library. So it is a contrast. Um, this one is usually checkout library. And that one is usually owning library. Yeah, yeah, good point. Okay, um, so for the patron circulation statistics report, we're going to uh, run the example uh, using Allendale. And uh, just remember that the date range is going to exclude the last day you select. So you want to, um, if we're going to run this for November, you want to end it on December 1st. because uh, it will exclude 12-1. Um, uh, All right, and now this shows um, the report title at the top, uh, and then next it shows the date range, the library you selected, and then here it shows um, by patron code the number of checkouts or renewals um, by patron code. All right, so now I'm going to go back into the circulation folder, and then you can always navigate um, through this uh, link trail here. So I'm going to click circulation to go back here. And just kind of go over some um, um, other reports that are uh, helpful. Uh, one is um, the top circulating items by collection right here. And then in the holds folder, Holds alert by branch uh, right here is um, also useful. And what this report does is it shows you uh, the titles with the most local holds um, that you can either purchase or fill by other means. So this really helps uh, with collection development decisions and um, choosing which um, titles to purchase. So uh, really useful report. Uh, and now what we're going to show you is uh, kind of go over how you can subscribe to a report. So say there was a report that you wanted to um, say you were in the you know collection development area of your library and you want to run this report on a recurring basis. Uh, we're going to kind of go through how to do that so you don't have to um, manually run it and set it up every time. So when you click these three dots here, uh, like Will mentioned, it shows you the um, summary of the report and what it does, but then there's also these uh, options here at the bottom. And um, one thing you can do is you can favorite reports um, and put them in your favorites, but then you can also here um, subscribe to reports. So I'm going to click subscribe here, and it will bring up this new subscription uh, page. So I'm going to say, um, uh, Call it like collection development report, and the owner is going to be uh, who you're logged in under. So we're sort of Uh It will say the type of description and the schedule. So uh, I'm going to go in here and edit the schedule, uh, clicking right here, and it will give us the schedule details. So since it's um, a report, say we want to run monthly, I'm going to switch it to month, and then it will uh, give me options for the months I want to run it. And um, on calendar days, we're going to say we're going to run it um, on the first of the month. And uh, just run it at 9 a.m. And then we want to start running it uh, 
in 2024. So we're going to run it uh, starting January 1st, and then we're not going to have a, a end to it. So it's going to run monthly. So I'm just going to go through here and make sure that's set up the way I want. And then go to apply here. So now I have the schedule changes right here. It's set up to run 9 a.m. on the 1st of every month, starting January 1st, 2024. So next up, destination delivery option um, is set to email. And I'm going to put in um, Zora Cirque at buckles.org, or you could put in um, your email address, um, you know, whichever email you want this report delivered to. All right, so now we just got to go through and make sure our parameters are uh, set correctly. So um, we need um, at least one hold, and then we want the pickup branch um, set to South Orange. Okay, so um, these parameters are now set up, and I can go to create subscription. Now I have a subscription created, and I don't have to go through and do all that work again, um, running it manually. So uh, there's ways you can edit the subscription once you've created it. There's kind of two ways to get to your subscriptions. I can go into the report in the uh, three dots again and um, uh, go to manage. Another way I can do it and see all my reports at once is this gear icon at the top here. Uh, settings, I click it and it says my subscriptions. And this will bring me into um, all my subscriptions on one dashboard. And I can um, manage them by, you know, I can edit, I can look at the titles, and um, we can um, enable, disable, or delete reports from here. So um, that's about it for um, the subscription side. And now I'm going to pass it back to Will. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen again. So we're going to go ahead and now go to the next thing that we have here. So I'm just going to close out of this and, uh, but we're back on buckles connect. Um, the next reporting tool that we're going to be discussing is simply reports. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that here. Um, and you'll notice that the URL for this is also simply reports.buckles.org slash simply reports. So that's your other option if you want to just uh, type in the URL um, instead of going through Buckles Connect. But you'll notice here that again, we have a login screen. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and use Sora Cirque as our example again. All right. And you'll be greeted by this screen. So, uh, again, just to give some background on what Simply Reports is, uh, it's a tool that was created by Innovative for staff members to create quick and customized reports on information currently in the ILS. Um, so, um, specifically more on currently, the reason for why we want to like stress that is because Simply Reports does not retrieve most historical data. Um, if you want to get more of the historical data, you would want to use the SQL reports that we just discussed before. So those Buckles customized reports and those Polaris reports would give you more historical data. This will give you um, more information that's currently in the ILS. So just keep that in mind when you're using each reporting tool. All right. So now that we've logged in, um, we can go into our first uh, type of report here. You'll notice at the top, there's a bunch of different tabs and they all represent different reports. Um, at the bottom here, we also have some sub reports. So, 1st off, we're going to start with patrons, which it's already selected by default. And then we're going to go into the 1st sub report, which is patron list reports. Um, so, just to give you um, an understanding of how this all works. You have your 1st box here, which is report output columns. These are the parameters that you can essentially select in order to construct your report. 
and you'll notice some, as I'm scrolling down, there's a lot of information here about the patron. So like patron registration date, patron barcode. Um, if I wanted to put patron barcode or use that for um, a part of my report, for example, we can go ahead and click that. And then from there, use this arrow to put it into our next box, which is column selected for output. Anything that's put into this box is, means that it's going to be selected and constructed um, for the report. So because we have patron barcode in here, the report is going to include every patron barcode based on what we kind of configure our report to be. Um, lastly, we can also do the, use this third box in order to sort a report as well. So if we want to have a report be sorted by patron barcode, what we would again do is click this um, parameter and then use this arrow in order to put it into the third box, which will then sort everything in terms of our data by patron barcode. Um, if you want to remove anything, so if, in this case, if you wanted to remove columns that are selected for sort, you can go ahead and just press the red X button and that'll remove it from the box. Um, in the same vein, if you want to uh, choose a different parameter and you don't want this parameter for your uh, report anymore, you can go ahead and press this um, arrow button to bring it back to the report output columns. You'll also notice here that the uh, parameter that we just used, patron barcode, goes all the way to the bottom. So if you want to use that again, just keep in mind any um, parameter that's been already selected and you put back into this box will be at the bottom. All right. Um, with that being said, we can now go into this bottom section, which is our filters, and this is um, going to be really helpful in configuring our report to our specific liking. Um, first up, we have patron general filters, and if we click this plus button, it, you'll notice here that it's a collapsible menu. If you want to close that menu up again, you can just press the minus button now, and it'll um, kind of collapse it. Pressing the plus button will expand it, though. Um, first up, we have uh, the patron record set. So this is what's kind of cool about Simply Reports is because Innovative developed it, um, it's very, um, it works really well with our ILS. And so you can even use patron record sets that you created in Leap, use that and then select that for your report. So that's gonna be a really helpful tool. Next up, you have the patron branch. Um, there's two types of ways that you can do this. You have the library quick pick in the branch. Um, you can use the library quick pick to select any sort of town within the consortium. Um, the really cool thing about this is that if you were to select a library with multiple branches, let's say, for example, Montclair, it's going to automatically select every single branch um, within that library. So this can be helpful if you want to get information about every single library. And this could be helpful for, uh, for South Orange, considering the fact that you um, guys will have a branch in the future. Um, Another option that you can ho use, however, is if you want to look at a particular branch, that's where you can unselect the library quick pick. And then from there, select the particular branch in the second option. So if we were to go to, for example, Hoboken, we can specifically select Grand Street branch instead of their main branch. So that's a really good tool as well. Uh, next up, you have patron code. So this is where you can select the patron type. You have the statistical class. You have language here, and then you have these last two resource group and vendor account. It's not really used as much, but um, um, there are the options are there for that. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this. Next up, we have patron date filters. Um, this is going to be really helpful if you want to do, uh, search anything on the patron record based on um, a date. So you have registration date, you have update date, last activity date, and from here you can actually use these fields based on what you select in order to uh, create a date range in which you'll find patrons within that date range based on this, um, the parameter you selected. So if I were to say, look for patrons with the last activity date between a certain date, um, between two certain dates, we can use um, this little uh, widget here to select our date based on the calendar, or we can literally just go into the field and then type in the date that we want. Um, and then again, it will start from, let's say, for example, if we wanted to do a year to date report, um, we can start by doing it from um, January 1st and then select uh, December 13th, which is the day today. So that's how you would be able to set up that filter. Next up, you have patron relative date filters. This works similarly to the filter that we just shown before. However, the difference with this one is if you want to set a specific measure of time, 
um, then you can utilize that in order to kind of get a better perspective on how these dates would work and how the um, data would kind of be generated. So, for example, we're going to use that last activity date. If we wanted to look for something for a patron six months before the current date, um, you can go ahead and click this drop down box and it'll give you a bunch of measure of times. So, you can do it by days, months, and years. So, I would select months, and then um, type in six so that it would look for any data for the last activity date on a patron six months before the current date, which is December 13th. So I believe it would look um, for anything in June. So that's gonna be a really helpful way to kind of look at that as well. I'm gonna collapse that. Next up, we have patron miscellaneous filters. Um, this is gonna be just helpful for anything that's on the patron record in general. So you have things like charges, credits, um, year-to-date circulation, postal code range, email address. This can just be utilized to kind of, again, narrow down your and limit your search when it comes to looking for particular patrons. Next up, we have patron block and notes filters. Um, if your library has a particular workflow where you like to type in specific notes on a patron's record or a type of patron's record, this can be helpful as well. Um, as you can see, there's non-blocking notes and blocking notes, free text blocks, the library assigned blocks, and then any other information here as well. So that's going to be really helpful to be able to, again, narrow down your search for particular patrons that you're looking for. Next up, we have patron user defined fields filters. This isn't used as much, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip that, but that's an option as well. And then lastly, you have patron ID filters. Um, what this is essentially used for, um, and it's a really important to kind of make this distinction, if you want to look for a range in between the patron ID on the patron record, then you can utilize this as well. So just to keep in mind and remind um, you this, this isn't the patron's barcode. This is the literal patron ID that's in the ILS and that's in the database. It's available on the patron record in LEAP as well, so you can get that ID, but it's a little bit more advanced considering the fact that you would need to know the particular IDs that you're looking for. All right. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to give a quick example of how we would be able to construct our report now. So um, in our example, we're going to make a report that will generate something that will give us the five patrons with the most checkouts within the consortium. Um, with that being said, I'm going to go into my parameters section here, the um, output column, and then we're going to select patron barcode to be selected for our report. We're also going to go scroll up here and then look for patron full name, which is right here. And then we're going to put that into the selected for output as well. Lastly, we have a patron lifetime cert count so we can get the amount of circulations that have been done on the patron record. So I'm going to click that. And now that we have all of this, um, there's one more thing that we need to make sure we do. We're going to make sure that everything is sorted by lifetime cert count in order to make sure that we get the top five patrons with the most checkouts. So I'm going to click that and it's going to bring it over here to our column selected for sort. Now that everything is set up for our report, we can go ahead and click this submit button right here to generate our report. It opens up a new tab and we're just going to wait for it to load so that we can have all of the data be available for us based on the construction of our report. And as you can see right here, this is all of our data. It even shows um, how many results have been shown here or given here, but it only limits you to only seeing 100 rows on this page. Um, so there's a few things that you can do from here at this point. First up, you'll notice that there's these three boxes here. The first one here is download report output. So this is similar to what we speak, um, we previously spoke about with the SQL reports. If we were to click this box, we'll get, it'll give us an option to download this report as an Excel file where we can then go ahead and sort it however we like, edit the data however we like. Um, so that's gonna be a really helpful option here. I'm not gonna go ahead and download this since this is a really big report, but um, you can use this whenever you would like. Next up, we have um, save report parameters for later use. This is going to be a really good um, and helpful tool for workflow purposes and for efficiency sake. If you notice that you've constructed a report with the parameters that you um, have and it was a really good report that you would like to keep, you can go ahead and save it here by clicking the checkbox. Next up, you'll have these different fields here where you can be able to fill in and give um, a name and a description to the reports. So in this case, we're going to name this one um, uh, the top five 
lifetime checkouts. And then from here, we can even put in an optional report description in order to uh, kind of further describe what this report is. So if we need to look for it later, we can. Now that we have everything essentially set up here, we can go ahead and click the save report parameters. I'm just gonna add a random uh, report description here. Looks like there was another one here that we had before. So we're gonna do top lifetime checkouts within the consortium. Oop, added in a field there by accident. There we go. And now that we have everything filled out, we can click the save report parameters. And you'll notice here now that it's, I clicked it, it says that the report has been saved within our account. And we're gonna go into how we can access that in a little bit. Um, next up, we have create patron records set from report results as well. So again, this is a really cool option that comes with the integration of uh, simply reports in the ILS. You can actually take this data set that we've generated and create a patron record set or any type of record set based on the report that we generated to be able to, again, further go into it um, within Leap, maybe make any bulk changes to it if we have the ability to do so. So that's gonna be really helpful as well. Again, if you click the checkbox here, you'll notice that it's similar to what um, we saw here with the other fields where we can put a record set name and then put a note to describe what this record set is for. Um, after everything is filled, then we can then just go ahead and click the save record set button. Um, so that's pretty much it for our options here. Uh, if you want to then get out of this data set, you can go ahead and press this close window button or you can just close out the tab um, all together, and then it'll bring you back to our report section here. Um, next up, we have patron account reports. Um, this is the second sub report that we have. If I go ahead and click here, it'll bring us to a similar uh, option, but it, you'll notice if as I scroll down, there's gonna be different options here specifically with some. Um, and that's going to be helpful because patron count reports are mostly utilized to give you data based on the count of something. So, um, just to give you an example of that as well, I'm going to do a report of how many patrons of each patron code are available within a particular library. And we're going to use South Orange as an example. So, first up, I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to patron code so I can use that as my column selected for output. Um, the filters here are pretty much the same as well. As you can see, they're not um, changed as much based on what we saw before. I'm just gonna go into the patron general filters here and then use the library quick pick to select South Orange as my option. So I'm just gonna scroll down and then select South Orange. Um, now that everything is essentially set up for our report, I'm gonna go ahead and click the submit button again. And you'll see here that we have a report that describes uh, the patron code and then the number of patrons that are tied to that patron code based in um, South Orange. So this is what you're gonna be mainly use the count re uh, reports for, which is to get a certain amount of count of a particular record essentially, um, or if you wanna kind of narrow down a specific record based on type. Um, so that's gonna be really helpful for you to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here, but just a reminder as well, you can also still download the report and save those parameters for later. And we don't have the option to, to create a record set in this case. All right. Lastly, we have patron statistical reports. Um, this is the third one. Um, this is a very advanced report, however, so we're not going to go into it during this training, but this is an option that you have here as well. Um, with that being said, I'm going to go pass it off to Luke, and he's going to explain the next type of report within Simply Reports. All right. So going back to um, Buckles Connect, I'm going to use the launcher here to go to Simply Reports. All right, so uh, we'll just went over uh, patron reports, the first category. The second category here we have is called patron account. And the first uh, subcategory is patron account list reports. So again, you're gonna have uh, three boxes at the top 
And the first box is going to be all your report output columns. Since this deals with the patron account, a lot of these um, have to do with uh, fines and charges and uh, transactions on the account. So you can see here um, transaction amount, transaction branch, all to the transactions. And then these are the assignment. Sorry, the items um, that are related to the transaction. Uh, and then we have uh, patron information. So uh, any of these you can select and move over. So say I want patron last name. I'm going to move it over with this arrow here. And now it's in column selected for output. And I could bring over patron first name and then say I wanted to sort by um, patron last name, move that over to the third one. And now it's going to sort it by the last name. And then I'm going to have two columns, last name and first name. Uh, okay, so just this uh, red X here will clear out anything in column selected for sort. And I'm going to move this back over. Um, and clear these out. Uh, next here, you can see in gray, it says transaction type. Um, and we can look at charges, credits, deposits, or uh, summary. So uh, going through these uh, filter options, I'm gonna expand this uh, patron account general filters. And this will give you um, uh, the first one will be the uh, uh, charge reason, the fee reason, uh, the payment method, cash check, et cetera, uh, the transacting branch, and the transaction creator and workstation. Next up, we have um, patron account miscellaneous filters. And this is where you can look, uh, filter things more by looking at um, Transactions that are greater than or less than a number. So if it's over $50, I could go like that. And then it will look at only transactions greater than 50. Um, and then you can look at charges greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and then the same with credits. I'm gonna close these. Uh, next, we have transaction date filters. So you can look at um, between two dates, or you can look at the date between. Um, X number of, uh, if I do this, I can do uh, two days ago in the report run date, two months ago in the report run date, or two years ago in the report run date. And the same with transaction date. Uh, next, we have item filters, and this is just gonna be the assigned branch, and then you can filter it some more here. Patron filters, uh, patron branch, patron uh, or patron code. Patron date filters, we'll look at the registration date. You can look at last activity date, expiration date. Patron relative date filters is similar, but it's looking at a date. Um, you can say uh, last activity date between, again, two days, months, or years ago, and whatever number you put in here. Patron miscellaneous filters. Uh, it's, you could look at like, you know, lost items greater than five for people that lose a lot of items. Um, just kind of miscellaneous ones you can pick and go through these. Uh, we don't use patron user defined field, uh, field filters. And then finally, patron ID filters. You can look at um, the barcode or patron ID. Okay, the next subcategory for patron account is patron account account reports. Uh, and this includes everything from before, um, but some additional information. So we have uh, this what I highlighted right here. It includes outstanding balance options, balance options, um, outstanding charges, outstanding credits, or outstanding deposits. And then these history options here, um, everything with payment history, wave history, um, refund history and so forth. The third subcategory here, uh, just like with patrons, uh, we don't use um, in this training um, just because it's more advanced, so we're not going to go into it. 
So now I'm going to go over to the third category, which is holds. And again, we have uh, three um, boxes at the top. The first box is um, output columns. And um, since this is uh, the holds category, the first section is um, all holds. And then we have um, item information, uh, mark information, patron information. So I can uh, say I want to bring over um, hold activation date and the item assigned branch, and then I want to sort by date. Uh, that's how that would work. But um, right here in this, uh, I'm just going to clear these out. So again, the red X here will clear out anything selected for sort. And then um, these arrows move items back and forth between the um, this box and this one. So I'm going to just move these back over. So now we're going to go through all these uh, filters. So hold general filters. We have the first one being um, the branch. And with all these, um, if you click library quick pick. Um, and say I did Hoboken, it automatically selects all the branches. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then I could look at like the whole status and some other options here. Next up, we have hold date filters. And this just is looking at uh, hold information between uh, two dates. So I could say the hold creation date between two dates. Uh, relative date filters. This is where you can look at the uh, X number of uh, days, months, or years uh, between that and the report run date. So I could look at 20 days ago, uh, the creation date, and, and today. Hold note filters. This is if you put anything in the note. Um, you can uh, type in the uh, text and it will, um, if you have kind of like standardized notes you put in, you can look them up that way and filter. Uh, bib record filters. Next, we have item filters. Only for an uh, item specific and filled request. Patron general filters. So uh, the two just being uh, the patron branch and the patron uh, code. Patron date filters, looking at activity, but uh, an expiration date. Uh, patron relative date filters, we can look at number of days, months, and years between um, something and the uh, report run date. So we can say um, last activity date. Uh, 20 days and today. Patron miscellaneous filters. This is where you can um, look at uh, other things on the account and you can say if greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and so forth. Uh, we are not, uh, we don't use user defined fields. And then uh, patron ID filters. Uh, you can look at the patron barcode or the patron ID. Hold count reports. Uh, this is just going to show everything. Um, and, but what's included now here is these optional um, choices here in the screen box. So you can say number of requests greater than 10. Um, you can say, you know, greater than 50 to, sorry, 50 to get um, really popular items. And uh, hold the statistical reports. Uh, we're not going to go into in this training. I'm going to log out uh, and Will's going to go into the items category.
right get back in here just sign in again with our Sora Circa account all right so for the next um, type of report we're going to be talking about the items report um, this is definitely going to be a really helpful one as well um, like we mentioned before in our previous ex ex uh, explanations of the types of reports we have the report output columns here which gives us our parameters as you can see this is different because it's uh, mainly focusing on the item record and then you can have some mark options here as well as well as patron options um, again if you want to select a particular type of parameter and you want it to be part of the report um, you would select the parameter that you would want in this case i'm just going to use item find code and then it'll be selected for the output if you again want to sort the uh, report based on a particular parameter, you can go ahead and click it and then bring it into the third box here so that it will be sort the report based on item find code in this example. And then if you ever want to remove it, just use the red X button and then this um, arrow button to bring them all out of the um, box that we just mentioned before. All right. So with that being said, let's go into our filters now again. Uh, next up, we have item general filters. This um, option gives you the ability to search up item record sets. Um, like, like we mentioned before, the integration with the ILS is really good. So that's going to be helpful if you need to run a report on a particular record set. Next up, you have the library quick pick and the branch options. If you want to kind of delve deeper and um, select this particular branch within the consortium. Uh, next up, you have the collection, which is going to be helpful too. You have the creator, modifier, the donor. You have your fine code, the home branch, the history action, loan period code, the material type, owner, record status, shelf location, shelving scheme, stat code, search status, and then these last two, which we don't use. So a bunch of more options here when it comes to the item record, as you can see. Go ahead and collapse that and we have now item date filters similar to what we just mentioned before a lot more options based on the item record particularly and is um, is pretty much similar to what we've mentioned before you would um, select the particular parameter in which you want to be able to uh, create a date range for let's say uh, first available date for an item record and then you can use these fields or use the widget in order to type in the particular date range that you would want and collapse that um, now you're going to notice here that we have other options with date filters this first one item relative date filters between two dates is going to be different um, this is similar to what we've seen before in which you can select a specific measure of time and then from there um, have it generate the report based on that particular measure of time and the current date so this is going to create a date range between in this case, if we use the example of six months again, we can do a six months ago report where it's looking from um, it's generating data based on anything from uh, June to now in December. Right with this relative date filter, it's a slightly bit different. Um, this is going to specifically again, give you uh, things prior to a specified date. So. It works similarly to the other date filters as well, where you can select the particular date um, with the measure of time, and it's gonna look for anything before that report run date, which is today. So that's gonna be an, another option for you as well in order to make sure you have the specific date that you're looking for, um, which is really important when it comes to generating this type of data. Next up, you have the item call numbers. Um, this is going to be helpful for anything when it comes to the call number, as you can see, there's every single type of like part of the call number here with the prefix, the classification number, you have your cutter, your suffix, your volume number and your copy number here as well. So all of that is going to be here and then you can create a range similar to the ones that we've seen before in order to find particular items within that range. We next up have item block note and funding filters. So we talked about this before, um, when there's, whenever there's a note, if you use a specific workflow uh, and you type in a particular note on particular records, you can use this as well in order to be able to search for those specific item records that you know have a particular note. Next up, we have item circulation filters. 
But again, just giving us more information here when it comes to circulation in particular. So you have lifetime circulation and lifetime in-house use, for example, um, and then you can set the less than or equal to um, the equal to options. Uh, they're all going to be here so that you can be able to look for that. All right, we next up have item check-in and transit filters. Um, this looks at, again, more parameters here specific to checking in items. So you have the check-in branch, the check-in user, the check-in workstation, and then you even have in-transit sending branch and in-transit receiving branch if you want to uh, really narrow down and limit your options here when it comes to the items. Next up, you have item checkbox filters, and this is going to be a really interesting one. If you want to uh, specifically look for items that are at following essentially these parameters here, you would select the checkbox next to them. So, for example, if in the item record, the holdable option is unchecked, you can select this and it will look for item records with the holdable option unchecked in the record. Um, it's really important to remember this as well. You want to make sure you're doing it one at a time because um, just doing it two at a time won't may not give you the um, information that you would want um, because of the fact that there may be a situation where you're creating reports solely looking for holdable unchecked and you don't want other things to kind of interfere with that. So that's going to be really helpful to remember. Well, um, just to clarify, it's it's not that you it'll interfere with it per se it's that um what it's going to do is it's going to look for um you you of course can't look for something that has holdable both unchecked and checked that's it, that's just a logical impossibility yeah. um, but it won't even let you do it but if you were to say do holdable unchecked and pick up at this branch checked or something um it's going to look for items that have both of those checked or um i should say unchecked and checked um hold the bond checked and pick up at this branch checked it's not going to look for anything with holdable unchecked or pick up at this branch check so just to clarify what it's doing the logic behind it gotcha yeah absolutely thank you margaret all right um so let's go to our next type of filter um we have the item record id filter and um, as we've mentioned before, this works similarly to the other filters when it comes to IDs that we've been mentioning. You're going to be looking particularly for the item record ID within the ILS, which is, again, um, available to you in LEAP, but you just don't want to confuse the two when it comes to the item barcode and the item record ID. Next up, we have bibliographic record filters. Um, this is going to be helpful for looking for particularly uh, things when it comes to the bib record. Um, so you have bib record sets here and then other options when it that refers to particularly bibliographic records. You have your patron general filters, which is similar to what we've seen in the other patron reports. So you can use the library quick pick and then branch and patron code. Um, this is more towards attaching an item specifically to a patron. So this will be helpful. And this, the same goes for the other filters here with patron date filters. It's similar to what we've seen before. Um, and then you have uh, kind of a mixture of the normal date filters and then your relative date to filters here where you can set a range um, specifically with dates or use the time of measure. You have your patron miscellaneous filters. Um, this one is slightly different where it again looks at the patron record and uh, can be able to find information by that. And then lastly, you have your patron ID filters, which again is similar to what we just mentioned before. That's the ID within the ILS or the patron ID, not the patron barcode. All right. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and provide an example on something that actually is used within our policies and procedures manual, which is uh, resource sharing compliance. Um, so this is a way that you can actually use simply reports to again follow policy and um, continually create a more efficient workflow for your library. Um, in this example, we're going to do that resource sharing compliance. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to the item barcode so that we can use that for our report. And then from here, we can go into a few of the different filters here. First up, we have item general filters, which we're going to use Allendale as our example for the library quick pick. Right, 
Next up, we have the item relative date filters um, prior to a specified date in this case. So we're going to click that one and we're going to do first available date more than as our parameter three months before the reporting due date. So I'm just going to select our drop down menu, uh, change it to months and then put in three in this, in this field. And then lastly, we're going to actually use the item checkbox filters that we were talking about before in order to uh, specifically generate four different types of reports in this case. So the four different types, or sorry, the, uh, yeah, the four different types that we have here are going to be the holdable unchecked. And what you would essentially do in this case is once you select the holdable unchecked option, you would submit and then generate your report. Once you have your data, you would go back into the configuration of this report, uncheck this, and then go to the next filter, which in this case is pick up at this branch checked. So you would do all of these different options, and this will be again illustrated into the policy. So that's going to be really um, helpful to have when you're uh, constructing these reports here. So we have holdable unchecked, pick up at this branch checked. We have brand patrons from this branch only checked. For so this one, and then we have patrons from this library and branches checked as our options. Um, for the sake of this um, situation and for this example, I'm going to leave this here and then I'm going to actually generate our report. And once it's generated, you'll see here we have a bunch of different item barcodes uh, with uh, our most being 281 results. And then we can do a bunch of um, things here similar to what we've seen before in our uh, previous types of reports. Specifically for this one, um, we're going to create an item record set here. And the reason for this is because um, when it comes to item records in particular, you're going to be doing uh, record sets for bulk changing. And this is a really good tool to utilize within Simply Reports where you can configure uh, specific filters and specific parameters in order to create the record set that you need from the list that you've generated here. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and type in resource sharing comp uh, compliance here. And then for record set, and I'm just going to put ALDL here. And then you can do a record set note to kind of give you um, more information on what the record set is, like we mentioned before. I'm not going to go ahead and save this record set, but that's how you would essentially do that. Um, I'm going to close this out and then we'll be greeted back to our original reporting uh, menu here. And just to clarify, the reason you would make that record set is because to comply with resource sharing policy, if you have patrons from this library and branches checked when an item's older than three months, you need to do a bulk change to the record set to uncheck it. So mm -hmm. you need a record set to be able to do that bulk change. Absolutely. Um, let's go on to our next sub report here, which is item count reports. Um, with this option, it's going to be again, similar to what we've seen before. Um, we're pretty much going to have our same filters here and, uh, same parameters here, except for the fact that there is going to be some options now, considering the fact this is, is that this is a count report. So keep that in mind as well. And then um, lastly, we have our item statistical reports, which is again to advance um, for this training, but we will look into uh, uh, doing this in a future training. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna pass it off to Luke and he's going to do um, the next type of report. All right, so the last type we're gonna go over is uh, bib reports. I'm gonna log in. All right, so um, for bibs report, the first subcategory is bibs list. And uh, we have the three boxes at the top and the first one with the report output columns with the uh, bib information uh mark information and 
And down at the bottom, we have uh, vendor information. Don't worry about that because we don't use um, that in, in um, uh, I believe we don't use uh, vendors in purchasing, but uh, everything above it you can use. So let's see, um, they want to mark author and lifetime cert count and if I wanted to sort by author, move this over one more, just like that, you can, um, the second column will be uh, column selected for output, and the third column is column selected for sort. So I'm gonna just click close out of these and move these back over, and we'll do an example in a little bit. But before we do the example, um, we're gonna keep uh, going through here. So next we have um, bibliographic general filters. Uh, and there's a lot here you can um, choose from. The bib date filters, we have mark publication year. Um, and these are uh, all creation date, first available date, imported date, modification date, record status date. And these are all between two dates. We have bib relative date filters. And this is going to show a period of time. Um, uh, and it's going to be whatever number you put in here and the number of days, months, or years ago in the report run date. So just like um, the other categories. Uh, we have bib mis miscellaneous filters. Um, and these are just uh, check boxes you can select to further narrow things down. Big bib aggregate filters. Uh, and this is gonna show kind of Boolean, so equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. And then we have bib ID filters. Okay, so now let's do the example going at the top. Um, then we wanted to look at most popular titles this year. So uh, we're gonna pull in uh, mark author, bib year to date cert count, and the mark title. Now, um, we want to and then sort it by most popular, right? So we're going to sort it by year to date cert count. But now you see here I have these columns in order, um, but say that's not the order I want it in. You don't have to move it all back and then start over. What you can do is use um, um, these arrows up and down to move things around. So um, say I want to mark title in the middle, I can put it in the middle. And then I can put the, the column at the bottom. So uh, now that everything is looks good, when I submit, it's going to open it in a new window and the tab is loading. All right, so it's going to show you the a preview of the first 100 rows. And you can see there were um, quite a few results here. So now you can see um, some of these really popular authors like Colleen Hoover. Uh, it Ends With Us has 2,786. And um, lessons in chemistry, it looks like, is number one with almost 5,000. So, um, and then again, you know, you could download this to, to Excel and, um, um, you know, work work with it in Excel, which is which is really useful. Um, but I'm just going to close out here and go back to the um, other categories here. So we have um, bib count reports, and this just shows everything's the same except you have this green box here that says optional and um, check, and you can uh, blank number of aggreg aggregated bibs. So that's the only difference there. And then the bib statistical um, is 
advanced, so we're not going to cover it in the basic reports training. All right, so that's it for all the different types of reports. Now, the really cool part here is um, the My Reports section. So this is kind of where you can um, schedule reports and keep all your reports together. And um, now that we use unique login, everyone has their own uh, section for their for their reports. So saved reports are going to all be in categories of report types. So um, first you need to go in and select a report type, and then on the right, it's going to display all your saved reports of that type. So um, I'm going to go down to patron list reports, because I believe that's um, one Will just uh, made today and, and saved it. You can see the creation date is December 13th today. The creator, the last run date. Um, so that's uh, now where it's going to be saved. So now I can just go into here and uh, select it. And I can say run report and now it's going to run the report. And I don't have to do all the work setting it up and filtering it out. I can, you know, it's totally saved and I can just go in and run it whenever I want. Um, you can also schedule reports. So if I go into here, um, I can close this. Um, now I can make a schedule. So I can say, um, uh, my top five and say, I want to start it. January one, uh, run monthly at 9am. And then uh, going in um, into here, um, I can also um, edit the report. And this will say, it says, we'll bring a pop up. Are you sure you want to edit? You can say, okay. And this actually then brings you back into the filters. If you ever have a report and you just want to like tweak it a little bit, make a little change, you can go back in and, and change it like this. Um, Next, um, and then next up, you can, um, if you wanted to, you could uh, delete it. Say, are you wanting to delete it? And you could say yes. Uh, now you can see here we have two other uh, tabs here um, next to my reports. So the first one is uh, file maintenance. And it will give us this drop down and it says uh, what type of report you want to access. And ad hoc reports are kind of reports that you run, run uh, you know, on the go one at a time or saved reports or scheduled reports. So if I go into the first one, it's showing all the um, kind of uh, the ad hoc ones. Um, these are saved ones and then scheduled. And then next over, we have uh, scheduled jobs. And then this is broken down by daily, weekly, and uh, monthly. And this is the schedule I just made um, just now. And then the uh, one-time schedules. That's pretty much it for um, Simply Reports. Now, I'm going to kind of talk about a lot of our, our recommended reports. And these are really invaluable to. Um, to use, so uh, you definitely want to uh, consider using these. The first one is the Dusty Book Report, and that will help you weed your collection. Uh, the Dusty Patron Report helps you clear out expired or inactive patrons with minimal fines. Missing for more than six months satisfies the missing items policy. The claims returned slash never had more than six months. Um, that satisfies the use claims never had policy. 
and then you could basically just change the search status to run it for the um, as a missing report. And then non holdable for more than three months uh, satisfies the resource sharing policy. And then you just use that same report and change six months to three, um, you know, to look at it that way. Um, so that is pretty much it for simple reports. I'm going to log out and uh, Will is now going to go over um, in Buckles Connect, the last category of reports, which is Buckles Statistics page. All right. So when it comes to our statistics page and the statistic reports that we have, we're just going to go back into Buckles Connect. And uh, since we're already logged in here, we can go ahead and get started with everything. Um, there's two ways that you can gain access to the statistics reports. Um, you have your first option, which is going to again be in the launcher where you can select the statistics button here. However, you also have the option here on your left. If you go ahead and select the channels button and. Uh, oh, sorry, the pages button. There we go. <laughs> if you go ahead and select that, you also have an option here for statistics as well, where you can select that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And you'll notice now that it'll bring us to a page within Buckles Connect called Statistics. Um, now, just to give you a brief explanation on this type of report, uh, statistics, statistics reports are just a collection of reports from the Buckles office that we generate um, on a monthly, annually, and quarterly basis. Um, with all of this information, you have the ability to just go into Buckles Connect and then select whichever report that you would like to view. And from there, you have um, constant access with it. Um, you also do not need um, a VPN or do not need to be connected to a Buckles computer in this case. You can just go into Buckles Connect and then uh, be able to look for those reports however you would like to, as long as you're signed in. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm going to give you a few examples of reports that are available within the statistics report. So, first up, we have circulation and cumulative monthly, and this is how you would essentially uh, navigate this, this page once you select a report. If I go ahead and click here, um, Buckles Connect is kind of hosted on a Google architecture. And so because of that, this is going to look a little familiar when it comes to a Google Drive sort of uh, format. Um, when it comes to looking for a specific year, you have all of these years here up until 2001 for this report. So a bunch of um, statistics are have been kept up to date and kept consistently throughout the consortium's history. Um, we have 2023 as our example here. So if we go ahead and click that and then go into the November 2023 option, you can be able to look at the data for November. Um, it'll open up as a Google Sheet, but all your information is now going to be available for you to look at. Um, if I scroll down here, we even have the option for South Orange. So all of your data will be shown up here. When it comes to um, the circulation cumulative monthly, as you can see, it's looking at all of the different circulation um, from year to date based on collection for each library. So that's going to be really helpful if you want to not only look at your numbers, but look at all the different numbers within the consortium as well to see how all the other libraries around you maybe you're doing. Um, so that's going to be really helpful to have as a kind of a resource to be able to have that, that information on hand. Um, whenever you're done, you can just go ahead and hit the X button and it'll close it out. Um, as you can see, we have every single month as well. So if you want to look at any past months to um, see everything, then you can go ahead and do that all the way back until January. All right. Um, our next report that we're going to be showing you is the eBuckle circulation report. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and this will bring us to the eBuckle circulation. This is going to be slightly different as the eBuckle circulation report is usually going to show the entire year. And as you can see, it doesn't um, categorize them in a folder or sort them in a folder. It just shows them all um, by year. But as you can see as well, um, you still have a bunch of that information. This one goes as far back as um, 2006. Um, we're going to look at the 2023 one now. And as this finishes loading up, it's going to give you a similar um, kind of view of all of the data that we have here. Um, currently, we don't have South Orange set up yet within this, um, but after this month, um, we're going to start to include you into the eBuckle circulation report. So 
take a look back and check up, check back to see how everything's going to work. But essentially, this just separates by month and by e audio book, by e book, and by e magazine all the circulation that the libraries have done. Um, this can be really helpful considering the fact that e buckles is a service that we provide for the libraries. So, this can be an option to kind of show um, maybe your board essentially that this is information and this is how much all the libraries benefit from having e content being. Kind of a, a universal thing within the consortium. Um, again, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here to close this out. And then for our last example of a report, we're going to do the reciprocal borrowing and lending monthly report. I'm just going to go ahead and click here. As you can see, there's also a yearly option, but we're just going to go do the monthly option for for this example. Again, as you see, the folders are um, uh, sorted. The same way that we did in the, or it's the same way that we saw in the first report, and it goes as far back as 2001. I'm going to go ahead and select 2023, and then we're going to select November again for um, a most current report. And then, as you can see here, this gives you again a similar um, sort of format for all the data that's been collected. Um, and this is only going to show the particular month, so you will have to go back and look at the other months. Um, if we scroll down here, this is again South Orange's information. If you want um, to look at that, and what these uh, essentially mean, loaned, loaned year to date, and borrowed, borrowed year to date. This is going to be helpful for libraries to kind of show how much um, materials they're loaning to other libraries and how much they're borrowing. So again, it, it's a report that can be utilized to show the value in being part of the Buckles Consortium. If you're noticing and seeing that you're borrowing more, for example, that can be a helpful uh, case or use case in showing how um, how much your uh, patrons are having access to more materials within the consortium now. So this is a great option and a great report to utilize as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. And that's essentially it for uh, the statistic reports. Again, if you want to take a look at anything, you can go ahead and click into the report. You'll notice here that there's a summary similar to what we've shown in previous reporting tools that'll give you some information on what this report will be specifically used for. So that's going to be really helpful as well. Um, we try our best to keep them updated as quickly as possible. Um, I would recommend just checking back after the first week of the month if it's a monthly report. Um, if it doesn't show up on the first day exactly, um, always take a look to see if the report is updated. We do try our best to get it um, updated though as quickly as possible. Um, there is also a few reports here that may not show any um, current reporting data. Um, that's meant to be the way it is right now. Um, but for the other reporting, for the other reports that we have listed here, um, they will be consistently updated over time. All right. Uh, with that being said, um, this concludes our report training. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for coming and for uh, watching us when it comes to this training. Thanks, William. Thanks, Luke. Um, I'll just wrap up with a couple of administrative things. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to type them into the, the chat box. So thank you to uh, Will and Luke for another great class. Thanks to everybody who attended. Uh, we will be sharing the recording, the slides, and I'll also be sending you an evaluation. If you could just give us your feedback on today's training, um, that would be appreciated. It also gives you an opportunity to let us know what future training you are interested in, in any, any topic. So why don't we give it a minute, see if there's any questions, and then we'll... Yes, Darlene, Margaret. you mentioned you mentioned sharing slides. We actually don't have slides for this one, um, but we oh, do I'm have sorry. a handout, and we have the um, recommended reports handout as well. Sorry, I misspoke. We're talking about the outline, right? Yeah, the outline and the um, recommended reports. reports. Yes, yes. Thank you for thank you for catching that, Margaret. <laughs> yeah, it's like you guys didn't have slides for everything that you talked about. I'm, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> okay. Yes. So uh, rec recording handout, the uh, recommended reports, and evaluation will be will be coming. Um, do you see any questions, Margaret? No, no questions yet. Okay. Maybe they just were super thorough. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. If anybody does have any questions, you could always you could always reach out with um, questions after 
after the fact. Yes, definitely. All righty. There is um, a support form specifically for reporting. So if you go um, into Buckles Connect to the support form, you'll see a category for reporting support. So you could ask questions there. And just a shout out to um, a change we made in LEAP. Uh, in the utilities menu, you can now access the support form from LEAP and Buckles Connect where all the reports are. Yep. Yeah, Great. pretty handy. We'll send out a notification about that, I'm sure, but. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so it looks like South Orange is counting on having questions coming up. Uh, once That's they, fine. Once they sort through all this. Yes, okay. do dig into it. Look at all your <laughs> options, play around. It's just reporting. You can't break anything. All righty. Okay, then I guess we're gonna we're gonna say class is dismissed unless anyone else has anything else that they'd like to say. Nope. Okay, I see lots of heads shaking now. Okay, <laughs> we are all set then. Again, thanks everyone. Have a good have a good afternoon. Bye everyone. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you.